Hello fellow truth seekers. So welcome to anyone new. Welcome back to those who've been here before. I just wanted to do a little uh, reading for yeah, Halloween, yes, but mostly that we're going through this tremendous shift, right? And I feel like this is a really pivotal moment. And so it's like even more intense, right? I feel like, um, I know I had a really, really intense uh, episode a couple of weeks back. And I feel like even though it was food poisoning, right? Which is like anybody can get at any time. It was still, right? If we get anything like that, it's still part of uh, this this process. And I'm opened up more than ever. And it just like seems like the worse it is, <laughs> the better it's going to be afterwards. So I just felt like it was a time when we need a pep talk, right? So this is like a pep talk from spirit, what you need to hear right now, um, what you need to know about what's coming and how to get there. Uh, so yeah. Hopefully you've taken a look. This is group one, group two, group three. And I'm not going to show these any closer. Uh, you pick what you're drawn to intuitively, right? I, I chose some kind of... Um, I, I don't know how to describe... I just tried to keep it pretty on the level uh, plain. Yeah, that's where, yeah, nothing fancy, <laughs> at least not on the surface, right? So, pick your group, and we'll get into number one. Okay. So, if you choose this rock, I don't know. I don't know what it is, uh, but it's really cool. I feel like... You know, that means, uh, you know, these little, uh, if I can get the word out, it's still Mercury retrograde. <laughs> and it's slowing down, right? It's getting ready to move forward. But the strata here, right? The layers. And I feel like there's a bit of a mystery since I don't know what this rock is. But it's like the layers are being stripped back, right? You're starting to get below the surface. It starts revealing uh, itself, right? The mystery, the riddle. <laughs> so, we're going to start out with some archetypes here. Let's see what spirit would like to throw out here. I'm just going to let spirit throw out what it wants and I'll read it all right spirit for group one what do they need to hear right now oh interesting okay we have the sword that truth at the bottom now these fell out on top of this and this is the desert in reverse right so you've been moving through the desert Oh, wow, the prayer and the storm, all in reverse. This is interesting. So I feel like this is definitely referring to what's going on internally. Right? There's a storm. This desert card, it talks about visioning, right? And of course... You know, in both of these, we have this hand reaching up. It mean, you know, the barren land, what seems to be barren anyway, right? The desert, it's dry, it's harsh, right? And in both of these, we see this hand reaching up. And this is like, and we even see a shadow here, right? That there's, you're being guided this whole time. And we see this diamond starting to form up here. So I feel like this is saying your prayer is being answered, right? It's kind of like 
coming through these things, just like I was talking about, right? Where it's like, it seems like it's so horrible, but really this is all bringing the prayer, you know, you've been sending out this prayer and it's on its way. All of this confusion, the chaos, right? And it's gonna like hit like lightning, like all of a sudden, you're gonna be like, oh my God. <laughs> the air has cleared. All right, we're turning these, well, we can, let's turn these upside down. But yeah, but the fact that this was with these, I, I just feel like it was saying, it's riding in on the storm, right? Okay. Get a little bit more here. Some tarot. This could be even sooner than you think, right? We have this lightning strike here as well. With this sword at the bottom of the deck. Hmm. The poet is underneath that. All right, and the poet is about going into the darkness and having, you know, this this knowledge that's been given to you to share with the world, right? With the sword. Some of you guys could be poets even. Hmm. And that kind of makes me think of the movie Patton. It's a very good movie. If you've never seen it, I, I'd advise it. But in the movie, you know, it's based on a true story. They're, you know, in World War II, they're going, getting ready to go to a big battle. And it seems like a lost cause, right? And he writes this prayer, or he has somebody else write it. I can't remember which. But, you know, he wants it to be like so perfect right the perfect prayer and spends a lot of time on it word it just so you know and that effort that he puts into that prayer you know he feels like it it it, it means more if it more effort is put when it more thought is put into it rather than just you know god please you know help me out with this you know <laughs> So, uh, you know, the fact that we have the sword and the poet coming out, that that's, you know, standing out to me. Mm. And sending it out with this um, full moon, right? If you happen, or even if you happen to watch this after, um, this is timeless. This point in time, though, is more uh, potent than most, right? The desert, the storm. The desert is also a place where we receive visions, right? Um, and so if you've had any visions, right? And this is a vision quest. Um, send out an offering with the, the prayer, with your request. Right? Yeah. Okay. Let's get some more here. Group one, please. Okay. Queen of Swords. Hmm. Three of Swords. There's the, yeah. And the mystery. Five of Pentacles, yeah, this is, a, uh, you know, this is like Seven of Wands, you know, you've, you've come a long way, know that. All of this might seem, you know, and it's like there's defense, defense on either side of this. Then we have Nine of Pentacles, Ace of Swords, the Magician, Queen of Pentacles, look at that. So, 
you kind of have to let down your guard a bit. You know, this prayer in reverse could have been, you know, that you have your guard up, right? You're expecting the worst right now because there's all this unknown. Things have seemed... <clears throat> oh, wow, look at that. The world and judgment. Wow. Okay, Ten of Pentacles. Beautiful. Okay. <clears throat> so, to finish my thought, sorry, I was like, whew. you've got to open up, right? You might be blocking that from coming in because you're, you're worried that it's just going to be more. I'm also getting, uh, like, unanswered prayer, right? Which is another reason why you may have been on the defense here. Right? So I'm just really, you know, it's like... And you haven't been able to see. That's why this moon is right in the mi middle. What this mystery is here, and the uncovering of the layers, right? You know that. I just think of that uh, Garth Brooks song. You know the unanswered prayer, and you know thanking God for unanswered prayers. And you know I see this with this judgment card, the world and judgment. I feel like, um, you know, when this storm comes in. Right, and I'm just get this feeling of Uranus, you know, striking with this, you know, and this sword, this truth coming through. Um, it's like this lightning hitting a tree <clears throat> and setting it ablaze, right? This Ace of Wands, and it, it it's like an awakening, right? With this Ten of Pentacles here, and the Hermit. And it, it's like everything becomes clear. You know, it's like the, the ancestors speaking to you. And of course, this it, it, I do feel like this is speaking of um, monetary benefits as well, right? Perhaps for an idea that comes through all of this. Uh, but you have something to share with the world, right? This, you know, you've been in the cave. You've been in the desert, and it's it's time to come out. See, she's in the desert. This and this, and it's like all this going through the desert, though, right? We see this, these colors lining up here, right? And it's touching this Ten of Pentacles, right? You've been able to reach spirit through this seemingly torturous process, right? <laughs> And then, you know, I see you celebrating. Celebr and, you know, I notice we have this little um, swirl here and here. And so I feel like, you know, we're celebrating personally with our friends, with our family, with spirit, and the world, the collective. This is... I mean, like, this is big with judgment being here, right? And this is like this new world that we're stepping into. It is, you know, this heaven on earth kind of thing that's being created. And it, it comes from what we do personally, right? Making an impact globally with the collective. This rebirth that's both on a personal and global scale. Absolutely. Okay, let's see here. Where do I want to go next? I kind of, I want to do 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 do. Let's go with the moonology. <laughs>
with Menology cards here. I feel like we might get another like layer of cards here. Oh wow, the Ace of Swords is sticking out. There's a couple of cards that are sticking out here. I feel like, ah uh, yeah, the Ace of Swords, the Magician. Yeah, and the, it's like you, you, you know, waving that wand with that prayer, right? Like the way that these cards work, <laughs> there'll be multiple messages. I might pull some more messages before it's all over from these. Um, but your word is your wand, all right? So spend time in, in you know, speaking your desires to spirit. All right. Do you have for group one, please, spirit messages for group one? Do you have anything else that's become out here? Okay. New moon in Virgo, a time to give rather than take at the bottom. Hmm. More Virgo energy. Full moon in Virgo and new moon in Capricorn. Your hard work is paying off. You are good enough. And I'm drawn to the green in this as well. Right, that courage. You know, I, the colors here, the yellow to the green to the blue. Right, this is about the courage to go after, you know, put action to those ideas, the sword, the magician, right? Those, those words and putting action behind them, right? That courage to voice yourself and and you know that creates magic okay yeah we've got the energy is gaining momentum waxing moon and full moon in scorpio it's time to release negativity we do have the new uh moon in scorpio coming up and well it's it's gonna be a big one yeah, I don't even know how to like go about <laughs> talking about this because um, I do enjoy using the. Uh... Let me make sure everything's in there. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Astrology that's happening because you know we have the third and final. Uh, conjunction between uh, Jupiter and Pluto a couple of days before that new moon in Scorpio. And that's going to be a great one to set intentions with as well. <clears throat> and, you know, this is just going along with this right here, right? It's time to release negativity. You are good enough. Make the magic, Scorpio, right? The energy is gaining momentum. You've been putting in the work. Keep it up. Set those intentions. Make the magic. Even though this is a new moon in Scorpio, you know, the time is ripe, right? I'm trying to think of anything's going on in Virgo. Um, I don't, nothing's coming to mind that might be there at any rate, because we do have, you know, a lot of Virgo energy. Perhaps some of you guys are Virgos, have Virgo in your chart. Uh, at any rate, it does have to do with health, right? Make sure you're taking good care of yourself because we are in the midst of all of this. And... You know, grounding yourself. You know, we have, <clears throat> you know, fire here. Then we have earth, earth, water, earth, water. Earth, earth, water. <laughs> so, you know, there's, of course, behind all of it, right? Some of this is, is uh, this air, this energy. Right, our thoughts. So we do have everything represented here. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, 
Yeah, okay. Before I do that, I do want to get the light sears out. Get another layer here on these cards a little bit more. I want to know about the world and judgment over here. Tell me more about the world and judgment, please, spirit. Ooh, those flew up. Oh yeah, look at this. We've got death and rebirth at the bottom of the deck. That's Scorpio energy. Look at that. Oh my God. <laughs> the world, the Ace of Cups and the Ten of Cups. Wow. I'm just, you know, this um, self-love, love of humanity, like, it's like, it's all coming for full circle. This, it's, the, the love is, is making magic. Wow. That is just gorgeous. <laughs> the re you know, this is this death and rebirth and... Wow. Three of Cups right underneath that. Knight of Swords. Two of Swords. The Hanged Man seeing things differently. And that Ace of Swords. Uh, yeah. That burst of insight. It's like enlightenment. Yeah. Enlightenment. An awakening. Beautiful. Okay. I feel like this Ace of Wands and Ten of Pentacles are together. Tell me about the Ace of Wands and Ten of Pentacles. Ace of Wands, Ten of Pentacles. Okay. Hmm. Ace of Wands, Five of Swords. With Seven of Swords at the bottom. You know, I, I did kind of get to that. Uh, okay, yeah. I mean, like, it, it's this desert in reverse, right? It's uh, um, the shift, the shift in thought that is um, needing to occur. Oh, wow. I never noticed, like... It's like everything is aligning, right? All these little dots are, you know, this is like sacred geometry. There's like these connecting of the dots. Things haven't been clear, right? Oh my God. Underneath that seven of swords is the sun. That clarity, you know, and it's just like shooting out of the sun you know, over top of her. And there's this like little lightning strike here on her thigh. You know, yeah, it's this mystery that we've been, you know, and it's like it's been driving us crazy. And it probably um, the being pent up right? The Ten of Pentacles can be, you know, a, a little bit of overdoing the home environment, but we're coming out of that. This shift in thinking, this awakening, right? Here we have, like, the victory. Okay. Now... Hermit, Three of Cups. Tell me about the Hermit and the Three of Cups, please, Spirit. Hermit and Three of Cups. Oh my God, that's too much. <laughs> We've got the High Priestess at the bottom. I told you, yeah, you, something to share with the world. You've been communing with Spirit. We've got the Chariot, the Wheel, 
Eight of Pentacles, Five of Cups, Ace of Pentacles. Yeah, okay, so this is just, you know, all this time that we've spent in here has been getting everything aligned, right? The chariot, getting that courage. And once we get all, all of this, you know, we, we put voice to our thoughts. The word is our wand. Once we, you know, because we are aligned here, that gets that wor the, the wheel turning here. And it's, you know, this is just talking about how much work you've put into it. And that shift again, right? This shift that's occurring. And, you know, I always see this as kind of a, a magician-y kind of energy here. You know, this pain that we've been going through, if we use it correctly, right? We can pour it into this vortex and create. You know, this is um, <laughs> Scorpio. This is uh, this card is Mars in Scorpio. This and this card is Sun in Virgo. Interesting. Um, all that Virgo en energy. Hmm. At any rate. Uh, Mars is a, a natural um, ruler of, of Scorpio. It's at home in Scorpio. It feels good in Scorpio. So, <laughs> I tend to see this more as, you know, making magic, right? Using those emotions to guide us, and uh, especially through this shift, right? Turning into those emotions to guide us. And out of that, right, out of the, by using our emotions in that way, we have this new beginning, this, this manifestation coming in. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna place these kinda like this. Very good. I can't help myself. It's Virgo. <laughs> I've got Virgo. Virgo is part of my first and second house. <laughs> yeah, Nine of Wands, the star. And there's that tower and strength. Four of Wands. Yeah, beautiful. This is just, you know, there's so much beauty coming in. Okay, we are going to move on to some closing guidance. I do want to get that closing guidance from the Art and Music Oracles. number one please <laughs> closing guidance for group number one beautiful okay <laughs> okay huh. and who do we have at the bottom mm. Sean Cocteau and this card always says to me, you know, it says the story only seems one-sided. There's no such thing as a happy ending. Find your future in the past. And for me, this talks about soulmate energy, right? You might, I mean, we, and we do see the green and the pink colors of the heart chakra. And all these little stars, right? Ah, oh, beautiful with Hildegarde von Bingen underneath. God is behind all of this, and um, if you're alone, right, um, love is coming in. And um, if you're with someone, you know, I feel like this is, is saying, um, make sure you pay attention to, you know, the other person as well, 
I'm just, this prayer is like speaking to me with that. <laughs> All right. Drawn to all the purple here. It's kind of um, flowing through. These two stayed in the deck, so I feel like this is kind of like um, more what we've been going through, what we are going through. Um, it says, don't be yourself, be yourselves, tell the truth in every fiction, take a good long look in someone else's mirror. And then it says, forward march, looking backward in shores of broken neck. Your art should wage war. The only constant will always be contradiction. Both of these, you know, I feel like this is, you know, the triggers that we've been uh, getting. This is the evolution of the masculine for me. Yeah, this Filippo Marinetti was uh, one of the futurists. And so, of course, this is about that future energy. It's about manifesto. Once again, that writing is, is coming up. But um, just what we've learned about ourselves, about other people through this time. And just to keep moving forward, right? The worst of it is over. I really get that feeling. <clears throat> now... Robbie Shankar came out all by himself. He's right in the center here. Always read and play between the lines. Your true nature is reflected in silence. Music is the infinite space between two souls. And that's bringing up that soulmate energy for me, the spirituality, the closeness to God. Um, you know, and, you know, it's kind of like hinting back to this, right? Um reading people, your interactions with people, and of course meditation. Your true nature is reflected in silence. And the, you can learn more by listening, right? <clears throat> this alignment, Prince, you know, we see the um, combination of the Mars and Venus hanging from his his uh, ear here. Um, <laughs> that just surprised me. When I, um, I'm for some reason I'm drawn to this, right? With all this sacred geometry that's that was coming out here, I'm just really drawn to all these like the interconnectedness. Um, do what you damn well like, but always do it to the utmost. Never lose touch with your color si colorful side. Your dream home lies outside of time. And uh, yeah, I get that Neptunian energy from that, right? And the uh, visioning aspect. And just to, you know, follow your heart. Balance as well. And then we have, in person, Elvis Presley, the king. You are a king. Never let reality stand in your way. Ah, because these two came out together, right? He fell out on top of Prince. Never let reality stand in your way. Your dream home lies outside of time. Your prayer is, become, is, is getting answered. Always keep heaven, heaven on speed dial, right? That connection to spirit that visioning it's manifesting you just don't see it yet and there's success coming in most definitely all right okay so i feel like that's all i need to say there and it, this was a quicker one than um yeah like if you were to get a personal reading it would be more in depth here <laughs> all right let's go ahead and close out with a piece of art as I like to do do the right Madonna with the long neck and once again you know it's that that voice right finding 
putting um, that action, there's a, there's something that you need to express, right? The sword, uh, the queen of swords, the hermit even, that, that sharing. And, you know, this is a, a that new creation, you know, something that you're birthing into the world. And it's very spiritual, right? Beautiful. Uh, I'm drawn to this person down here in the corner. Can you make that out? For some reason, I'm getting a Sagittarius vibe from it. I can't really see it. All right, well... Maybe you all were supposed to see it. <laughs> oh, he's reading like a scroll. Yeah. The words, once again. Yeah, that's what it's about. Okay. Because you are good enough, whatever this is. Release any negativity you have with it because you're making magic, right? These, you know, this is like the turmoil that you've been working through right the confusion just have faith right it's coming put yourself out there right he's got the microphone <laughs> all right guys i hope that this was helpful and uh yeah until next time much love group number two so, you chose what appears to be kind of a hideous rock. <laughs> Interesting, but uh, yeah. But then we turn it over and look. Hopefully that's catching some of the glitter that's, that's there. Yeah, a little bit. But yeah, I mean, we've got the beautiful coloration of the white swirling through the darkness and the crystals that are forming. So I feel like this, you know, what is on the outside right now is not matching what's on the inside, right? And you've got tremendous growth in there, but it's like your life right now, it's not matching who you are, right? That's what I'm getting anyway. <laughs> so, let's see what messages Spirit has for you. A little pep talk he's got for you. Now, this will be a rather, you know, kind of a shorter reading. And uh, I do offer this as. An option that you can you know you can get personal guidance and uh, yeah it's a, it's a little bit more in depth okay we're gonna so this is yeah talking about what all you've been through <laughs> but it's been eating out all the those things that no longer serve us Hmm. Okay, one. Okay. Whoa. Now all of a sudden they want to talk. I was like. Yeah, so Afniteru here at the bottom. This is being supported. Spirit has you. This is kind of like a four of wands to me, but these are like um, gods, right? We see Anubis who leads us through the underworld. This is like. I feel like this is. Um, Haru, who is the son of Ra. So you have spirit guiding you through all this. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, look at this. This is healing. This is, this is Septet. She is the black Oset. She's my favorite. This is um, having, you know, merged with your shadow and you're really communing with spirit and, uh, 
just really, um, you know, you're, you're like gaining a lot of knowledge, occult knowledge. Okay. I feel like and this is, yeah, this is the cosmos, right? You're communing with this co cosmos. There's lots of healing happening here. This could be about, uh, you healing others as well at this point. Mm, yeah, okay, so they want to feel like this is a kind of a, a side message, even. Yeah, because this is that dark night of the soul, separation. This is um, sexual um, desire. <laughs> and then this is like the sudden resolution of a problem, right? Like, it's like the light shoots out here from Kepper Ra, which is uh, the sun god, and it's like everything gets transformed. You know, and this is Scorpio, too. Hmm. Interesting. So, like, if you've been having troubles with, um, you know, and I often get the twin flame kind of feeling from this. What I'm getting from this is that it's like from darkness into light. You know, and I don't know when this is going to be, but, I mean, we do have Scorpio shown here. So, I mean, like, there could be, and I'm, I'm drawn to this, like, star. It's, like, hanging from the cosmos, and this, this figure down here kind of looking at it. You all see that? You've been getting the signs, right? This is another. So watch for more, and I feel like it will have something to do with, like, you know, specific things from this reading, even. From this, you know, scorpions, of course, you know, we are in Scorpio season. Um, this is the golden ratio. Some stuff with stars, right? Like seeing a shooting star, um, beetles. You know, see what it stands out to you, right? But this is saying, you know, that separation was necessary. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out where I'm going to put this because it's kind of, I feel like it's separate from this other stuff. Well, let's see. This is about writing that, you know, we've, I keep on getting it, you know, writing those. I'm just going to stick them right here. Hi, Zena. <laughs> yeah, this is like the distillate, you know, it's like... All of this that we've been through, you know, she's she's the consort of Tahuti Thoth, right? So she does have to do with history, she, but knowledge, right? And the courage that we, you know, I'm noticing here we have uh, the cheetah and the leopard, you know, that cat energy that courage, the perseverance, and all that we've learned, you know, the history, um, the, you know, this right here is kind of like that rebirth afterwards, you know, taking that knowledge and being reborn again. It, one of the things that it says, um, I always hear it in my my mind whenever I see this card, is the distillation of experience. And, you know, we see this fire. Ah, oh, this has happened before. That's interesting, right? This this fire that he breathes out, the, what he's eaten, what we've experienced, what we've had to go through to kind of purify ourselves, right? And this is like this lotus blossom, and this rising up out of the ashes, a new, completely reborn, but with the knowledge, right? 
kind of like the youthfulness with, you know, the, the knowledge here. You know, if I could do it again with the knowledge I have now, right? I mean, like, <laughs> and we, that, that's what this is saying. And this is joy. This is like, um, you know, because after, you know, like I said before, the worse it is right now, the more joy we're going to be feeling later, the more we're burning up karma and, um, yeah. Amazing. I mean, like, it really is. I uh, just... Okay. And then, yeah, just like this communing with, with spirit. I lost my light. <laughs> communing with spirit and um, gaining knowledge. So much not, I mean, like, it, it's like, it, you might not even know, and it's like, I feel like, you know, this is um, that high priestess kind of energy, being able to take what you're learning from the cosmos, right? This is like their astrological wheel here. We see the four directions, right? Like, it's just like taking what you're learning from them, that connection, pulling down the knowledge and sharing it with others, and this healing, healing of yourself and healing of others. So you got it going on, group two. I love that Septet came out, especially with the Shen, Shenua, I guess is what it's called. I mean, like, <clears throat> and you can see here, you know, these cards have come out at the beginning, right? To say, this is, this is over. <laughs> and I feel like these are different sets, right? You are so protected, though, right? Like, I just see this. All this is like, and it's a, of your own doing, right? You've built up your aura. You've built up this protection around yourself. But also, spirit is protecting you. Absolutely. Okay. Let's get some tarot on this. I guess it's... <laughs> I was like, why isn't anything coming out of here? But um, he was just lining everything up just so. That's how it goes. Then all of a sudden, 10 million messages. All right. What you got for group two, please, Spirit? Okay. Let's see what we got here. Oh, the world. Eight of Cups, okay, King of Cups, and Three of Swords. Okay. I feel, let me, I'm going to get a little bit more here because, um, you know, it's like this came after this, right? There might be... Let's see. What comes after this Three of Swords, please, Spirit? Well. Hmm. Look at all these fives. I feel like so. There is healing happening here. Knight of Cups, Lovers, the Emperor, Two of Pentacles, Four of Wands. Okay. So, 
what I'm feeling here. I mean, obviously, like, some major shifts are happening, right? That from this to this, yeah? <clears throat> like, it's right below the surface. Because we've got one, I mean, look at these fives. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven fives. That's just, that's craziness. All right. Of course, this is, I mean, there's major shifts going on in the world. Yeah. I mean, like I was talking about that, um, Scorpio new moon is at 23 degrees. You know, and then we have, um, the eights showing up as well. And that, you know, it takes that, that courage that we're needing to kind of like continue to, to move through this, right? Move through these shifts. And some of them are going to be, you know, easier, right? This, this, um, resolution of, you know, it's like, just like that from darkness to light, you know, and we see the same blue happening here and here. And he, you know, his whole head is covered in it here. Yeah. <clears throat> but there is, you know, we do this, this did happen for, you know, I thought that maybe, um, you know, I guess this is saying there are going to be moments of, of joy, right? We know, and as we're moving through this process, and I know you've probably known this, right? It's easy to kind of like move into that joy and kind of like face the, um, the healing because healing can be, um, kind of hard, right? But I mean, like we have this King of Cups looking at it, you know, and the King of Cups, he's so uh, just calm, right? He can face all these emotions. He learns from these emotions, but I feel like, you know, with this, this, I feel like this world card is saying the world is waiting for you. It's just waiting for you. All right. And we have this Knight of Cups at the bottom, you know, this moving from your heart, making a choice to, to, you know, lead with your heart, follow, you know, take control of your life. Because I think that this is saying, it's asking you to kind of like expose yourself, right? To make this decision. You've got the whole world in your hands. But what you're, you know, you're, you're kind of, you're enclosed in this one small portion. And this is that, you know, walking away from convention, right? Listening to your own inner guide, too, with this higher font in reverse. Um, but yeah, leaving convention behind, and it, it might be that you're causing uh, some pain for some other people, right? Or there's this worry that you're causing pain for other people, right? You feel a sense of obligation to them, and you're, you're worried about leaving them out in the cold. And, and this could have to do with a child as well, being as, as, you know, when we have children involved, that makes it all the more difficult. And you don't have to make this decision right now, right? The Two of Wands is, you know, and we're in this kind of, like, place of... Uh, My word, Mercury retrograde, guys. It's for real. <laughs> My words get stuck. Um, integration, right? So, like, there's, you know, this is holding power. This is, yes, a decision, but and it's even almost that you've made the decision. But there's, there's power that's being built up in the waiting, right? Allowing these shifts to happen. Knowing, you know, this, this is kind of, you know, crossing you, supporting you even. 
Yeah, um, this is um, that what's on the outside, right? What's on the outside might not look like what's on the inside. On the inside, spirit, right? The fifth element. Tune in to that, and I feel like, you know, that that gives this even more power, right? What are your beliefs? Follow those. And, you know, this is like coming out of the closet. I really feel like, you know, that's kind of a, a big thing, a big, um, you know, uh, in order to take on septet here. You have to come out of the closet, you know, and this is the spiritual closet in this case. <laughs> uh, you can't heal otherwise, right? You, you don't have power otherwise. Coming out of this spiritual closet, as scary as it may seem, you know, the you know being ostracized being, you know, looked at like you're crazy. I know, I've experienced it all. <laughs> um, it's still is worth it, right? I mean, that's part of this shift. And I feel like you almost are controlling the shift in a certain way, right? Like, you have power in this. Which way does this shift go, right? Is it looking at the heartache or is it, you know, crossing the bridge and um, finding this, this, this new love, the immediate resolution of a problem? <laughs> you connecting with the fifth element? Are you going on this adventure? It's something of greater fulfillment. All right. Let's see what we got here. Definitely need another card here. They want to make sure they get the right ones for you guys. <laughs> I feel like they definitely, um, yeah, baby steps. Yeah. And we have Pillar of Light. Your vibration is rising. You are the oracle. Mm -hmm. Then we have the ever unfolding rose. Cracked open and it's happening for you, not to you. Right? And that's a, even like this. I have another one. Uh, I don't think that, you know, this was the same. And they, these are different rocks. But um, I think anyway, yeah. But, right, we can't, we don't see this beautiful inside until it's cracked open, right? In this case, saw it open, I suppose. But, you know, this is just, I feel it's, it's wanting to say, yeah, we get, things have not been easy, right? Longing for home, belonging, the original light workers. Yeah, I feel like you, there's a part of you that's wanting to uh, it's wanting to, sorry, you guys, um, you know, it's, it's wanted to belong and you've kind of, you know, you've, I feel like you've almost found your place where you belong. And now Spirit's asking you to step, or you somewhat belong. I don't think you really belong, but <clears throat> it's what you know, right? So just know what's going on, you know, and even if this is someone that's left you, Right? This has left you open with to choices and given you power. 
Anna, grandmother of Jesus, seeding the light, laying foundations, divine plan, right? I mean, spirit has, this is all part of the plan. And baby steps, action, follow your intuition before it makes sense. But, you know, there's not a big hurry, right? These And the two and three of wands, they are about active waiting in a sense right like taking those little steps but it does you know not so big that it kind of sends you crawling back into your your cave um but enough that you are kind of um experimenting a little bit right seeing what happens and this, you know, these baby steps are leading you to your soulmate or soul family, you know. Soulmate doesn't necessarily jive with you. Okay. Let's see here. I want to get a second round here of guidance of the tarot. I want to find out more about the Hierophant in reverse. Hmm. It's interesting, we, you know, I was just thinking, I was looking at the world, and most of the time, the Two of Wands will show someone holding a, uh, <laughs> underneath that is Priestess, and underneath that is Awakening. <laughs> All right. Um, it's the world, right? This is, in this instance, it's technology, right? This connection to the world. So it might be in the form of like um, some kind of spiritual leader, tarot reader, what have you. Okay. All right, Spirit, tell us about this Hierophant in reverse. Tell me about this Hierophant in reverse, please. Mm. Okay, we have the Ten of Rainbows, which will be the Ten of Pentacles at the bottom. We are the world. <laughs> yeah, that connection, you know, that does give us the connection with uh, the world, with the suppression. Yeah, like I said, I feel like you're, it's like, um, hmm. But this is the Four of Wands, and it kind of crossed Amet here. Creativity, which is the Empress existence, which is the Magician. So yeah, it's like, what's got you all tied up, right? This right here. It's, it's weighing you down. It's keeping you from fully realizing your potential, right? And it's like this, uh, yeah, with this Amit, right? He's what eats the dead, what purifies. This Four of Wands, this participation card is saying, you know, you need to be a part of this. You have to do what you have to do, right? Because this is, you know, the Empress and the Magician here for the Hierophant in reverse, right? You haven't stepped into that power yet. You haven't made that decision. You're suppressing this yourself as a spiritual leader. Mm-hmm. 
And once again, you know, this is um, uh, the star. Where did I? It was over here somewhere, right? Where he was, yeah, right here. It's like you have to make the wish, right? Set the intention. You have the power to do this. You have, you know, you, you create, you know, the Empress is all kinds of uh, creative, uh, manifestative um, energy. I don't know that that's an actual word, but <laughs> this is saying, and yeah, I'm gonna lay it right over top of <laughs> That five of pentacles because that's it you know it's almost like you know you are keeping this manifestation from coming in right because this was kind of like at the end here because you're not stepping into your power you're not believing in your power And this is like, you know, this existence card. This is like how special you are, how important you are to this universe. Yeah, you need, you've got to, you know, there's that guilt, but it's, it's the time is right. You, you've got to... Um, you know, get rid of that burden, right? What's weighing on your back in order to move into your rightful place in the universe? There's something that needs to be released here. All right, let's see about this Two of Wands. Tell us about the Two of Wands, please, Spirit. <laughs> okay. Uh, three of wands, three of fire here, four of fire there, uh, and completion, the world card here at the bottom with conditioning underneath, right? Yeah. And then this is nothingness is came out in reverse. It's the hierophant. <laughs> Schizophrenia, two of air. With yeah, you're fighting with yourself. Look at this with the this fighting card crossing, and it's crossing right over here. This Eight of Cups, King of Cups. Yeah, and I just I, I I'm really you know this isn't going to be for everyone, but I feel like you know this could have to do with the marriage, right? Leaving a marriage as well, right? Becoming. Um, separating yourself, right? Becoming the one, the individual. That won't be for everybody, of course. Yeah, there's, you know, and this is called experiencing. And we see all these rainbow colors here. And this, um, Two of air, and this, we see this image of him hanging between these two choices, right? These two buildings. And it says in the, in the book, um, the only thing to do here is to let go and see what happens, <laughs> right? You know, go into the void, right? And really enjoy life, you know, take the baby steps, right? I feel like, you know, your intuition it has got to be like out of this world, you know, right? We have this, but you know, the, the missing piece is that intuition, really listening to that, right? Listening to the intuition, listening to your higher self, listening to spirit, right? Going within, going into the void, you know, letting go and going into that void. What, what does it tell you? Right? This experiencing, you know, this is about 
enjoying life, you know, as it connecting along the way, right? As you take those little steps, right? And you'll feel when you're making the right steps. You know, and of course, sometimes they're going to be scary. Absolutely. But you'll still know, like, you'll after you do it, you know, it'll be, like, kind of scary ahead of time. But you'll be, like, just pushed. Pushed to do it anyway. When you do, you, you know, it'll be like this afterwards, right? You'll know you made the right step. Two to three. Yeah, those small steps. And just feeling into it and integrating again, right? Beautiful. Okay. Closing guidance. Closing guidance. Ah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> We're going to go with the Moonology deck. Actually, let's... I can't help myself, guys. Forgive me. Forgive me. Hit the fast forward button if you can't stand it. <laughs> okay. I'm satisfied there. Okay. Closing guidance, please. Ooh. Okay, that's too many. Sorry about that, guys. I got interrupted. <laughs> All right, so. Ha! Ah, a little spider is crawling on this deck. All of a sudden, I don't know where it came from. And that's a good sign for abundance. Right? They're good luck. Now he's crawling over everything. <laughs> and that could be a sign also about your fears, right? I just, like used to, <laughs> at one point in time, something like that would, uh, I'd be terrified. I wouldn't have picked up that, that, <laughs> heck no. So, you know, that could be about facing some fears too. It's interesting. All right. So, <clears throat> I think that the, uh, huge, amount of cards that came out had to do with the, um, <clears throat> I was getting ready to get interrupted. <laughs> so new moon and Aquarius. Mm-hmm. Okay. My end new moon eclipse. Expect powerful change. Bring love into the situation. And at the bottom of the deck, we have void of course moon. Nothing will come of this situation. Now, this means, you know, it's, it's talking about this here, right? Going into the void. Um, also, like whatever it is that you are, you know, involved in that you need to walk away from, right? You're going to know what it is. And it's interesting, you know, this new moon eclipse, expect powerful change. I feel like this has to do with, you know, we have new moon in Aquarius. <clears throat> This has to do with this, you know, of course, what we do, right? And it's like this, I keep on coming back to this guy, right? And all the fives that have come out. <clears throat> Another one here. We are going through this massive shift. But when you do this, right? When you move from your heart, right? See, so he's walking away from these cups, right? Eight cups. You worked a long time to, to get those cups, but it's not your 10 of cups, right? This walking towards this king of cups, 
you know, and take that as it resonates, whether it's you becoming the King of Cups, really taking control of your life, really moving from your heart, <clears throat> or moving towards, like, a true King of Cups, right? But you have to walk through the portal here, right? You have to step into this new world. You have to walk away from the old. When you do that, it's going to be so powerful. And, it, you know, the new moon in Aquarius, this also speaks, you know, it's just bring love into the situation, but it also talks about being detached. You know, if you're really like um, holding on for the wrong reasons, detaching from it, leaving it behind in order to move from a more authentic, loving place. That's what I'm seeing there. All right. Now, let's get a piece of art. I always got to end with the art. Okay, four, group two. Let's go over here. Okay, to the left. The lamentation. Okay. But then look. You know, it's, it's so interesting. It's like, yes, lamenting what's being left behind, right? We see it here. But this is, you know, guidance to do it, right? This is, um, look at the enlightenment that's here. This is the sacrifice, right? Then... We see this guy with the burden, right? The suppression here. And all of the heavens. Like this guy's blowing the, the horn, right? Wake up. <laughs> Put down the burden. You know, these earthly burdens. You know, as we see people fighting over here. Being crushed. Crushed by the weight. And this is, you know, it's like, and everybody on in heaven is like, oh, look here, we've got the lions. Looking on. So I feel like, you know, this is like this, this sacrifice, this kind of freeze. Like, I mean, this still looks more open than this, right? Room of the Giants. There's still an openness, a brightness here. Burden. Sacrifice. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Man, this was supposed to be a pep talk, Spirit. <laughs> I feel like I need to get, like, one more card here. A card of encouragement, please. A card of encouragement. Oh, okay, that's too many. Okay, I'm going to take them anyway. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> they are not encouraging you I mean like okay here we go at the bottom we have I remember and maybe if they're they're not maybe this is encouragement because um they know you better than me right I'm like wanting to be a sugar coat and everything because I said it was a pep talk, but maybe you've got to have some tough love, right? Because we've got, you got the love, codependency, boundaries, align your life, what is not aligned or needs to change, <laughs> share your voice, come out of the cave, persecution, expression, what did I say, and mirror who or what is triggering you. And this, though, I feel is that twin flame right i'm getting I, I always see this as like that twin flame thing and um twin flame two of wands here um 
four of air here. Um, longing for home, longing for, um, you know, the original light workers that can, you know, the original light workers, according to the Egyptians here, were uh, Oset and Amon. I can't remember now, but <laughs> so, you know, it's like, I definitely am feeling like, you know, they're saying, get out of what is not aligned with you. Share your voice, right? Come out of the cave because this energy is what's keeping you from sharing your voice, right? You, because what will these people do if you share your voice? Right? I'm, I, I feel like you've got to shed some things in order to share your voice. And by doing that, you know, it's not like immediate that it comes in. Right? But when it does, it's like, whew, there they are. Okay. So that was the closing encouragement. <laughs> there is like this true love out there for you but right now you know as long as you're staying in this place where you are right now you know and like it doesn't have to be hurried right baby steps but to get where you belong all right you have to start taking them okay yeah, this I remember at the bottom play, and it's interesting. We have this nothing will come of this situation and this perspective. None of this matters. Zoom out, right? Two different decks there. Very similar visuals. But play... And this is, you know, remember to take part in life. I mean, like we're, we're really opening up here in this I remember soul plan, right? The, the faded life versus the destiny life. Divine plan here. How are you going to get there, right? You're just going to let it happen? Or are you going to start taking those steps? Because you have to participate, right? Okay. There's your pep talk. Group number two. <laughs> I hope that this was helpful. I hope it resonated. And until next time, much love. Hello, group three. So you chose this fossil of some sort. Um, kind of looks like a tooth to me. <laughs> looks like a big dinosaur tooth or shark tooth or... You know, of course, it's very old, which I feel says that you're an old soul. And, you know, I get this feeling that, you know, there's wisdom, you know, with the two, with the, you know, my feeling that this might, it looks like a tooth. There's wisdom in there, in you. And I feel like you've been really on your path. You've uncovered a lot. You've gotten down into the um, karmic stuff, right? Releasing a lot of your old karma, accessing the Akashic records, that sort of thing. So, let's see. What kind of pep talk does Spirit have for you? What do you need to hear right now? What does group three need to hear right now? Spirit, what? We're asking for a pep talk for group three. <laughs> group two uh, got a really interesting pep talk. <laughs> oh, that last one wanted to come out. We have family at the bottom of the deck. Shirley Jackson. She wrote the lottery, we all may remember. Ah, look at that, the dark. 
this is, you know, they tend to turn this way. So this, the dark is going out. But also, you know, sometimes I see it here lately. It's really been, you know, yeah, kind of a challenge. Of course, it's been challenging us. But it's also, wow, look at that transformation and love right here. Wow. It's amazing. Okay. These are beautiful cards. Okay. But this, you know, the dark, it actually, you know, it challenges us, but it also supports us, right? It's like, I've really been seeing these cards that people say across us, they're our challenge, our obstacle. But and at the same time, you know, all of them are opportunities, right? It's like this going into the dark or even just the unknown, right? It's helped, it's, it's caused us to grow. And I see this as like the primordial soup, right? And you're connecting with it. Because the primordial soup, you know, you think of like a, a cesspool, <laughs> right? It's it's not a nice place to go, but gosh, there's abundance of life there. You had the bees, the peacock, and milk. And they all came out together face down. And this is that, you know, these... um. Akashic records, right? The past. Milk, the nourishment. The bees are the honey, the honey and the milk. And the, um, this peacock is, is um, you know, the divine. Yeah, the Akashic records. Just like I, I said, I, I, I definitely see that here. But also, you know, just the work that you've put in, the nourishment that you, you know, all of it is nourishing, right? The dark, the cesspool is nourishing. It, it grows us and it's, we've been, you know, connecting with uh, this, it's like the crown here, right? Connecting with spirit, connecting with the Akashic records. And, and yeah, this transformation card here, Yumiko Karahashi. Is you know that um, transformation, right? The um, getting rid of the uh, the karma, and then this love card here. It says you burning. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I can't help but feel you know get that sense of. Um, especially with the milk card, even the, the 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 peacock, that yeah, there is divine love coming in, but more just um, you know, she, you're growing wings, like a, you're becoming an angel, right? You're becoming divine. And just this um, the bust here. Right, the compassion. And she is, she's wearing a crown, or, well, something on her head where the crown would be. So that's interesting. Let's get some more. But I feel like milk and honey is coming in splendor, right? It's like everything you know this dark is going out all the you know be feeling like you're in this unknown space um the darkness is all around you kind of, you know it's like five of pentacles kind of feeling i mean this is sylvia plath right if you're familiar with <laughs> most of us have she you know it's pretty dark Yeah, and of course, Yumiko Karahashi. And I'm sorry if I'm not saying that correctly. <laughs> uh, she wrote some really, like, twisted kind of stuff, right? So, I mean, like, there's this, um, definitely the shadow work. And this is saying that shadow work is going to be rewarded, right? With this love card. 
this it's like a trophy even yeah All this work you've put in will be rewarded. There might have been some family issues as well. All right, you see the tea spilling here. And then we have the eye and the eel. So, I don't know if this is, our, and then there's power underneath that. Ah, oh, look at that. We have teacup under there. Okay, I'm going to stop here. <laughs> like, ah, and this, the milk has spilled. And this one, look at that. These cards are so crazy. It's Toni Morrison. Of course, she wrote Beloved. which is about, you know, a haunting, which I know, you know, I don't feel like, you know, this is Halloween, of course, but, and we are, ah, oh. mm. the, th the veil is being, is thin, right? So there might be somebody coming through, right? Pay attention. And the fact that we have spilled things, pay attention around, if anything gets spilled or dropped, like pay attention to that. See if there aren't any, you know, because we see this here, there might be some kind of, um, you know, look into it, see if you can't, I mean, you are, you know, we have this peacock here, which is, and can be very, uh, <sighs> Damn, uh, Mercury retrograde is, is, is playing with me. Um, psychic, <laughs> right? Really tuned in. And the veil is thinner, so it's it's helping us see easier, right? This And even she has is connecting with um, this bowl, this start, you know, and, and there's liquid in it, right? And this, this moon, yeah, has cracked open. Uh-huh, interesting. Uh, so kind of look and see what kind of signs you see in it, right? Just if it so happens, because it, it seems like it's revealing something. The eel is what lurks beneath, and the eye, of course, is seeing it. And the teacup, right? Maybe you read tea leaves, or maybe you should try. I don't know. That's interesting. Yeah, because then underneath that we have Mary Shelley, Loss, Frankenstein. Somebody's coming through for you guys. I think, you know, this is an underlying message. I don't necessarily feel it in here all that much. Mm mm. But I definitely see that as an underlying message, like something that wanted to come through. All right. Interesting. <laughs> All right, let's see what Tarot has to add to this. And if not, you know, something is going to be revealed for sure. And if it, you know, I got the don't cry over spilt milk. Uh, something does go wrong. Know that it is, you know, ultimately leading you to love, right? Okay. I want to do one more here. Okay. What messages do you have for group three? What do they need to hear right now? Okay. Mm-hmm. 
Five of Plumes, which would be Five of Swords in reverse. Six of Plumes. Seven of Blooms. Page of Blooms. And this is Seven of Cups. Page of Cups. And then we have... <laughs> Queen of Blooms. Knight of Bones. And I think that that is it. We have King of Bones at the bottom of the deck. Hmm. Okay, so, you know, I love that it came out like this. This five of plumes, the conflict, you know, six of plumes, it's moving into calmer waters, right? So the worst of it is over, right? It's spirit is saying the worst of it is over. You know, it's time to, you know, with, with ducks, I always think of... Um, Eckhart Tolle talks, uh, talks about how ducks, they get into fights and they, you know, go off, they, they fly off from each other and then they come back and it's like nothing ever happened, right? <laughs> so I see that as like, you know, the, the, the duck kind of like shaking his tail feathers, you know, shaking what, what doesn't, you know, suit you and just like letting it go, right? Moving on, moving into better spaces. And, you know, this is healing. When this, uh, these, the blooms follow the plumes, <laughs> means healing is happening. And I feel like what this is saying is as we're moving, you know, this is transition too. You know, this transformation, this transition. We're moving from one period into another. And this particular period of time is extremely potent for visualizing what we want, right? And it's like this, it starts out as this little seed. Yeah, you know, just kind of like looking at it. And then we see in this orb, this is um, a blue sea dragon it's a it's a sea slug it gets it only grows to be about an inch long <laughs> so about as big as this right and it's an interesting little creature it actually eats what one of the things it does is uh it feeds on like man of war right um creatures such as that much bigger than they are and they're able to take this the stinging cells of those creatures like the man of war the portuguese man of war and it takes them and stores them so that it becomes able to defend itself with with stings and such it also floats upside down the blue part is like down the you know it's kind of a camouflage so there's kind of like this fake it till you make it kind of thing like so it blends in with the water below it with that and then the underside is silver so that the, the sunlight coming down it just blends in with that as well so it's like have the vision act as if right think as if it's already happening and then we get the queen of blooms and i feel like this is that realization especially with the knight of bones here uh, you know and this is that compassion that love of the queen of blooms and uh, you know it's, i love the octopus the octopus you know, uses these tentacles as another way of sensing it, the world around it. it. Uses its vision, its smell, right? It uses these tentacles, and you know, it's got this big brain <laughs> where it just you know synthesizes all of this 
information it's getting in order to set the course, right? The, the, choose the right course of action. And, yeah, I see you do, you know, this is like instruction, but also this Knight of Bones coming after all of these hearts, it's like moving towards what you want in a very practical fashion and willing to put in whatever needs to happen to do it. And you're going to have so much abundance coming in like you know and it's and it's pure right it's it's there's integrity in it it's from doing what you love sharing with others right i see service to others here but also just all because you're living that way and because it is completely generous you know from the heart being rewarded in a big way, right, with this King of Bones here at the bottom of the deck. And this is that old energy, right? This is the ancestors shining on you and rewarding you and love, absolutely. You know, this, I feel like this is a person I see you as the Queen of Blooms, and this King of Bones is your future partner. Yeah, and if it's the other, you know, other way around, it, you know, we all have masculine and feminine energy. All right, we're going to get some messages from the fairies, and then we'll get um. We'll pull a little bit more tarot as well. Messages for three. What does group three need to hear? Okay. We have the singer of healing at the bottom. I told you. Healing, for sure. <laughs> All right, we have, oh, beautiful. The Master Maker, Luethis the Wild, and Iris of the Rainbows. And I guess I'm just going to put, I hate it when there's, it's like not equal. Yeah, I feel like these two and go together. The way that, I mean, they all go together, but. All right, so. Hmm, the master maker, right? This is all this work that you've been putting in. And of course, the master maker is, uh, you know, it's an ongoing process. You know, and I'm drawn to this blueness right here in her, right? And then this is kind of more the colors that he has in him. You know, so it's that fake it till you make it and then, you know, you're, you're there, right? You're, whatever it is that, you know, and this feels creative, definitely very creative. Um, But you have, you have everything it takes. And this is just saying, you know, do the best you can each time. You know, make the best that you can make. Give the best that you can give. And each time, you know, you're just getting better and better. Beautiful. But these, ma you know, the master numbers, they are almost always something that you know there it, there's challenge involved in it right you have to overcome a lot in order to become a master in order to learn what you need to learn that to share and give and teach right and that's you know this luathus the wild he is wild energy and he both creates and destroys both 
and I do feel like he's been, you know, it's like, and it's just this, this, the dark energy, right? It's like, you know, you see these tattered wings, and yes, I feel like, you know, for the most part, he's been running rampant, right? But as we destroy, we also create. You cannot have one without the other. And this is Iris of the Rainbows. The rainbow after the storm. Yeah, and I see they're dipping their arrows in her light here. And, you know, you have the arrows and you are the light, I feel. Or you will be. And this energy, right? It's helping create the this rainbow energy that we can use to aim for our targets, right? Aim for our creations. What are we wanting to manifest? Because this is also that manifestation energy. Okay. <clears throat> I want to put the Singer of Healing over here, which leaves He of the Fiery Sword at the bottom of the deck, which is the masculine. That is spiritual will, integrity, right? All those things I was talking about. Because I think you are healing, and then, of course, you're going to be able to give that healing to others as well. All right, that's... We can't help others. We can't teach others how to overcome these difficulties without having been through them ourselves. Okay. So, I want to see about... Yeah, I'm going to, like, do two, two, two. All right, these together, these together, these together. Although, yeah... about the five of plumes in reverse with the six of plumes. Tell me more. <laughs> hmm. Oh. Oh. <laughs> right. Okay. So... This is interesting. We've got the King of Cups, the Moon, crossed by the Emperor. Hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely getting the the water and then the fire, right? It's like. We, and this is also a nod to you at how well you've handled all of the turmoil. You know, I'm kind of seeing this as that Mars retrograde in Aries, right? It hasn't been easy having this masculine energy, but it's what has happened is that we've been forced to be more compassionate. We've been forced to kind of take a step back and, you know, kind of bring in more of that watery energy into our lives. You know, this is Pisces as well. And we've had Neptune retrograde in Pisces, right? This, this energy right here. And it hasn't been easy. I keep on, you know, this, it's, you know, not being able to see things clearly, not being able to move forward, right? It's like 
we've wanted to take action, but we every step that we take, there's like something in our way, right? This darkness, this frustration. But you've handled it beautifully. And Spirit is giving you some kudos here. Kudos to pile three. <laughs> All right. Seven of Blooms, Page of Blooms. Tell us about the Seven of Blooms and the Page of Blooms. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God, okay. We don't need all of that. Let's see what we've got here. Oh. Trying to decide whether, oh. Hi, my, the Seven of Blooms and the Page of Blooms is all kind of, I mean, like, okay, look at this. <laughs> we have uh, the Hierophant Faith at the bottom. Ooh, but the, the, and that's interesting. I wasn't going to say it. Um, but we have the Devil right underneath the King of Bones here as well. So that's interesting. Yeah, and that three, then three of wands behind that, four of blooms, it's behind, with temperance, I was talking about, oh, with king of blooms, underneath that, with the hanged man, underneath that, this is like, and the empress is underneath the, okay, I'm, I'm gonna quit, I'm gonna quit, but, you know, this is having overcome you know, the doing the the dark, you know, the shadow work and embracing, right? I mean, like it, heaven and hell, you know, this is like, this right here was devised by, you know, this, the Hierophant, you know, not necessarily in this uh, deck, but I mean, like we have the Hierophant and then we have the King of Bones here, which is Taurian energy as well. And those structures that have been put in place, those are actually, you know, what has created what we call or see as the devil. That is so, Page of Cups underneath that, with the Seven of Cups underneath that, <laughs> God. <sighs> okay. I'm trying to decide, hmm, these fell right on top of me and it was like, they were like this. So I feel like, you know, this is coming in. I feel like, you know, it's like. You know, this magician, I told you, it's about manifestation. And what do you want? This is like, I mean, uh, look at this. I mean, this major arcana, totally associated with this. And of course, this is like, you know, this is magic, this page of blooms. Man, the hanging man in reverse is really like kind of throwing me for a loop here. Hmm. Okay. I get it now. I just it you've made the decision you've seen the light, right? You've already seen the light. You've made the decision. All of this has already occurred. It's just a matter of bringing it into being. Right, learning how to use this magic, though, is absolutely necessary. The balance here, having everything in the right, you know, the, using the right amounts of everything, having the right balance, having the right um, focus. Which is why it's kind of like fake it till you make it.
because then we have the priestess, the tower, the palace of coins, and the knight of coins, right? When you find, and once again, and this is one, two. I feel like this is, ah, uh, yeah, okay. This is the queen of blooms and the knight of bones. They went ahead and spit it out. They're like, we know this is all together. <laughs> this is all together. When you are able to get that, you know, because the hanged man and the priestess, right, they're kind of similar. Even this imagery kind of like, right, he's just, I'm going to go ahead and turn it upright. Um, but he's just levitating, right? Completely focused, right? It's a meditation. And she is completely in tune with the moon here, right? Complete focus. Once again, darkness into darkness, the key to all mystery. The dark. <sighs> this is the next step, right? The magician and the priestess. That is amazing. The lovers, right? This is this is somebody you've already met. You've already seen the light. You've already you already know what you want. There's no choice be made. Um this is talking about thing, you know, this balance that you've brought into yourself, the time, you know, that we've been kind of um, feeling stuck. That's over. Now, we start to tune in, right? This high priest. I was feeling, you know, that high priestess energy from this Queen of Blooms. Of course, even more than that, really. Then we have the Tower. Right, that you know, that tuning in, that enlightenment, that, and then we have the palace of coins and the knight of coins, all that abundance, it just comes in like <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> you know. There is a possibility that you get this fairly soon. Just because of that Uranus energy. Just because of these being in reverse. It just kind of feels, you know, the alignment is amazing. <laughs> all right, all right. So, let me look at the time here. Woo. Okay. We're just going to get a piece of art to close it out. I feel like, yeah, there's not more that needs to be said. All right. Give us a piece of art for group number three, please. I'm kind of drawn to go towards the back here. Okay. To the right. A game stall. So, you know, I'm just getting a bounty. Right, for some of us, we might see this as kind of um, horrid, but if you think of when this was done, right, because we are communing with the ancestors here. This was a, I mean, this is bounty. Is that a, uh, I can't tell. Does that look like it's a peacock? Kind of look like peacock feathers. Hmm. Do pheasants have similar? I mean, like, that really does look like a peacock feather. That's interesting. Hmm. I'm just kind of inspecting. Hopefully you all are as well. The boar here in this um, deck 
is the masculine. It's also that Mars energy, right? Which they're one and the same here in this reading. Yeah. Hmm. There's also, I, I, I just like got another message with these. Um, yeah, that some of that isolation was forced, right? Which kind of forced us to see things a little bit different. Because I think that there was like kind of this, you know, denial, right? And this kind of feeling like giving up on this situation. Because I do feel like this is like divine counterparts here. This is saying have faith, right? This, I just got the, it's all been, you know, done. It's, you know, the, the manifestations are like, they're done, you know, you just have to, pro, it's just being processed now. <laughs> Because we see this too, right? I don't, it, it looks like some kind of like, you know, mach machine. Um, this agglomeration of industrial parts has become a series of unstable volumes that are ripe with dynamic energy. Hmm. Interesting. Because so we have, you know, this machine over here for the processing. We just have to learn how to use it, right? All right. <sighs> okay. I think that's all that needs to be said. I hope that that was helpful. And, um, yeah. Until next time. Much love.